Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are going to continue with this series about how to obtain the different parameters of a DC-DC converter by simulation. So today we are going to talk about how to obtain the output impedance of a DC-DC converter by simulation. And we are going to see three ways to obtain this output impedance. So in this presentation we will see first an introduction, then we will review the theoretical calculation of the output impedance of a DC-DC converter, and then we will present the three methodologies to obtain by simulation the output impedance of a DC-DC converter. The first one is by using the actual circuit, the second one is by using the average circuit, and finally, by using the small signal circuit. These are three relevant videos about this topic. We have Power Electronics number 3, Ultra Fast Modeling of DC-DC Converters in Continuous Conduction Mode. The other one is LT Spice number 6, Open Loop Frequency Response of a DC-DC Converter to understand how to obtain the frequency response of a converter using LT spice. And also in a previous video we have seen three ways to obtain the input impedance of a DC-DC converter. So the output impedance of a DC-DC converter is important because we can model the behavior of the converter at the output. So, for example, if we apply a step up or a step down transient at the output on the current of the converter, we can obtain from the output impedance how is going to evolve in time the output voltage. For this, we can model our converter like this. We have the equivalent voltage source, we have the output impedance in series, and then we have the current source that is applying the step-up transient at the output. So from this, we can obtain the output voltage like this in a general situation. If we are not considering perturbations on this voltage source, then we can make null this voltage source. So we can obtain the perturbation on the output voltage by using this expression here. And if the current is a step uh, transient, as shown here, which, is, which has this expression in Laplace, Plus domain, then we will have this value for the perturbation on the voltage. And from this, we can obtain the inverse Laplace transform and finally get the evolution of the voltage in time. This is interesting and maybe this will be the topic for a future video, how to do this theoretically and how to check this by simulation. Another interesting application of the output impedance of a DC-DC converter is to study dynamically the interaction of two DC-DC converters operating in cascade. So here we have these two DC-DC converters. We can model the first converter with the equivalent output voltage, the output impedance, and then the second can be modeled by using the input impedance. So here our task is to study how is going to behave the voltage here at the interface between both converters. So we can obtain this expression here and from this we can obtain this other function which is uh, the transfer function of the voltage at the interface over the output voltage of the first converter. So we get this expression and from this we can know if the behavior of both converters is going to be stable or not depending on the roots of this expression here. This is especially important in closed loop operation because as we have seen in the previous video on this series, the input impedance of a DC-DC converter is negative at low frequency and then this can produce instability in the operation of both converters. 
So in this previous video, Power Electronics number three, about how to model DC-DC converters in continuous conduction mode, we saw how from the actual back converter operating in continuous conduction mode, we can obtain the average circuit which is like this, using current sources and the voltage sources that depends on the different parameters of the circuit, and then taking perturbations on this circuit, then we can obtain the small signal circuit in continuous conduction mode, which is the one shown here. And from this circuit, we can obtain all the different transfer functions of the converter, including the output impedance that we are interested in today. So this is the way to obtain the output impedance of the DC-DC converter from the small signal circuit. We are making null the perturbations coming from the duty cycle and from the input. So we have a source circuit here, the, the voltage source at the input. These other two voltage sources are going to behave as a source circuit. And this current source here is an open circuit. So now we are applying a current at the output in order to obtain the output impedance. So the output impedance is obtained, as we have seen, like this, is the minus perturbation of the voltage divided by the perturbation on the current. So we can see that is just the equivalent impedance of the resistance, the impedance of the capacitor and the impedance of the inductor in parallel. So this is the final expression and we can operate on this expression and get this other expression in which we have already polynomials at the numerator and at the denominator. So I like very much the modeling using this type of circuits because we can very easily understand what is the output impedance of the converter. The output impedance is at the end the equivalent impedance of all these three impedances. So we get finally in this expression and from it we can also obtain two relevant points as usual. One is the output impedance at DC at the very low frequencies. So making S equal to zero here we get this expression. So at the end is the parallel combination of the series resistance of the inductance and the load resistance. Usually the load resistance is much higher than the series resistance of the inductance, so at the end this is going to be very close to the series resistance of the inductor. And the other point is what happens when we increase very much the frequency, so we are getting almost infinite perturbation frequency. And then, of course, what we are obtaining is the equivalent impedance of the load resistance resistance and the series resistance of the capacitor because the capacitor at very high frequency is a short circuit and the inductor at a very high frequency is like an open circuit. So we have this expression and again because the load resistance usually is much higher then we get a value which is close to the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor. Now we are going to calculate the output impedance of our DC-DC converter theoretically. We are using the same converter as in previous videos. So here we have a WinPython script to represent the body diagram of the output impedance. Here we have the expression, we are doing the plotting here and here we are printing several points. So from this script, we obtain this plotting of the output impedance. This is the magnitude of the output impedance and this is the phase of the output impedance. And here we have four points at different frequencies. In order to check these results in comparison with the simulation results. If you are not familiar with WinPython, please take a look at these two videos about an introduction to WinPython and how to do frequency analysis and obtain body plots using WinPython.
Now let's see how to obtain the output impedance of our DC-DC converter by simulation. This is the first possibility using the actual circuit. Here we are using in our simulation the real circuit including the switch, the diodes and all the elements. What we do here to obtain the output impedance is to add here this current source at the output to inject the perturbation at the output and we are measuring the current injected using this sensor here and then we are measuring the perturbation at the output so we use this voltage source to generate here an output voltage which is going to be this output voltage multiplied by minus one so at the end by the ratio of the output minus minus the output voltage divided by the input which is the uh, current injected then we can obtain the output impedance for this we need to extract the perturbations from the output and from the input here and for this we do these statements as we have seen in this previous video LTS is number 6 and also these elements that we uh, are showing here and using here uh, like this sensor also here are from our Simulink compatible control library that we have presented in this uh, video and in other videos after this one. We have done this type of simulations many times in previous videos so I am not going to use LTSPICE now. I am showing here and directly the results so we are plotting here the gain of the output impedance versus frequency and then we can see that this is the magnitude of the gain in dBs and this here in dashed line is the phase of the output impedance. We can check for example this point in comparison with the theoretical results which is uh, shown here this point and we can see that they are very similar. The second way to obtain the output impedance by simulation is by using the average circuit as we are showing here. In this case the simulation is going to be much quicker because we are not simulating what is happening at the switching frequency within each switching period. We are only simulating the evolutions of the average variables and then again we are using this current source to inject the perturbation of the current and we are measuring the output with this voltage source corresponding to the output voltage at this point. And again, in this case, we have to extract the perturbations, the small signal perturbations of the current and of the voltage here at this point using all these statements. And from them, we can finally obtain, as shown here, the gain, the magnitude of the gain and the phase of the gain. And finally, do the plotting. And here are the results. Again, we have here the magnitude of the gain and also the phase of the gain. And for example, at this point, we get these values that are very similar to the theoretical results. We can see that in this case, we don't have noise at high frequency because we are not considering switching frequency. So we have a smooth representation of the impedance in the whole range. However, this does not mean that this is a valid value of the output impedance at high frequencies because when we are getting very close to the switching frequency, it does not make much sense to obtain the output impedance of the converter, at least in this way because the system becomes highly nonlinear. And finally, this is the third way to obtain the output impedance of our DC-DC converter. In this case, we are using the small signal circuit 
that we have here and we have seen in previous uh, videos how to obtain this equivalent circuit. So here in this circuit everything is a small signal, everything is perturbation. So we add again a current source at the output, but in this case we are going to do a small signal AC analysis. So here we are using the AC parameter of the current source to inject a value of 1 ampere of AC perturbation here. And then we do an AC analysis as shown here. And we can obtain the output impedance as the ratio of the output of voltage perturbation, which is here, and the uh, output current perturbation, and multiplying by minus 1. The advantage of using this circuit is that it is extremely fast in the simulation because here we are not only getting rid of what is happening at the switching frequency but also we are getting rid of the average behavior of the different variables and we are keeping only the small signal behavior so this simulation is very very fast. So here we have the results of the simulation. Note that we are representing here minus the output voltage directly because this is the perturbation and I have added here over 1 because it's 1 ampere what we are injecting. This is only to understand better that this is the output impedance of our converter and then we can see again the magnitude of the output impedance and the phase of the output impedance. Here we have another point and then we can see that it matches perfectly the results obtained from the theoretical analysis. Okay, this is all today in this video. I hope that you find this information useful for your future activities. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.